Good evening. Welcome, everybody, to uh, our latest edition live of Exeter Praise. My name is Mark Pugh, and my good friend is with me to my left, to my right. I can't quite work it out. Uh, it's me, great Aaron. to be with you all. My name is Aaron Richardson. I'm the minister at Riverside Church, and we'll be hosting together tonight's uh, prayer event that's going right across the city of Exeter. Isn't it brilliant? There's so much we've missed and lost during this time of lockdown, but there's a lot of things that we are finding and gaining and maximizing on. And our ability to join together in prayer mm. is one That's of right. those areas. And it's been a real blessing to hold a number of these now. And they're all live, so anything can happen. And we, <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's, let's pray it all be appropriate, whatever happens. But we would love you to interact with us this evening because mm. this is not really. Um, the latest next Netflix series. This is participation, and mm. we are looking this evening for you to join us, uh, leaders from across the city, in prayer to pray. God, would you let your kingdom come in this great city mm. of Exeter? We've got a range of people who are going to participate throughout the night, and we've got a musician, Josh Chesworth, who's going to be playing throughout the evening as well. Let's give a big hello to Josh, shall we? Can we bring him on the screen? There's his keyboard and his hand, and uh, we'll be hearing both of those throughout the evening as well. Really appreciate being part of this, Josh. Um, we're going to have a number of leaders who are participating this mm. evening, and they're going to be leading us in our prayers. And as they do so, we would love you to go into the chat rooms, whatever forum you're watching this and participating on, there'll be some form of chat function. And if you were put in there, maybe some answers to prayer that you've had since the last exit of praise, we'd love to hear those stories and those testimonies. Or if there are some things you feel particularly burdened by, or there's some prophetic words even that you have, we would love you to share those in there. And we will be trying to loop those back as the evening goes on. We want to hear from you. And this one of the reasons why it's live so that we can loop those things back mm -hmm. into our conversations. So we pray that God will stir our hearts with his heart this evening and that we will know that we're not just hopefully trying to send some sound up to the sky, but we have a God who is close, who cares, who loves us, is for us, and he is looking for his people to stand in the gap and to intercede on behalf of this great city. So mm -hmm. I'm going to hand over to Aaron now, who's going to lead us in our first section of prayer this evening. Over to you, Aaron. Thank you, Mark. Tim Keller said that cities buzz with people. They hum with energy. They grow needs. In short, they are bursting with opportunity for the gospel. But if we want to be part of God's work in our cities and through our churches, we need to pray. And so as we pray, take a time just to pause right now and to refocus, recenter our scattered senses on God's presence. And as you do that, I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession, that you, the church, may declare the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are calling on your church to be in our city a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a light in the darkness. As we demonstrate this in action, tonight we pray for those who serve in politics and cities, government and policing. In our communities, we pray for our communities, for unity across the churches. And in our character, we pray for the church to be salt and light. And so we pray you would reach out all over the city right now and touch people's hearts, touch their lives, touch their minds. Draw us together to work for the sake of the kingdom. 
as we connect together to call down heaven that your will would be done here on earth in the city of Exeter as it is in heaven. So bless all those taking part. Let your spirit rest upon them right now. All of us who pray, who lean in tonight, draw us into one heart, one spirit, one mind, that we may intercede on behalf of the well-being and the welfare of this city, that we may see incredible results come through this. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark, I'm just going to pass back to you. Thank you, Aaron. I'm sure, like many of us, you've been stirred by the themes of racial injustice that we have been exposed to maybe in new ways over recent weeks. I know I've been deeply moved as I've read around this topic and met people and heard people share great pain that they've experienced. And we're going to be praying in just a moment for um, unity and racial justice and a number of other things around that theme. And uh, before I introduce uh, our first person who's going to lead us in prayer on that, there's a great two verses in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Samuel Oluwafemi, who is going to lead us in our prayers for the unity and diversity of the church. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Thank you very much, Pastor Pew. Um, I would invite us to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, from verses 9 to 12. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white, white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And reflecting on this word of God, I would invite us to pray. I would want us to talk to God that the Lord will uh, bring us back together as a people that we experience the days of heaven and earth, that people of all nations and tribes and tongues and distinct physical characteristics, we come together as one in Christ Jesus. I would want us to reflect and to pray to God that the Lord will make us to be one. Because it is written in his word, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Lord, help us to be one. We come against every spirit of division, every spirit of separation, every spirit of segregation. Lord, we come against it because it is written that if any house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Make us to be one, even as you are one, Lord Jesus. Help us to be bounded together in love, in the love of Christ. Because our God is no respecter of person, but anyone that do righteousness is, ex is accepted by God. It is our prayer that in all nations, in all tribes, in all countries, the Lord himself, the Prince of Peace, we bring about justice, we bring about love, we bring about acceptance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hand over to Pastor Pew. And now we're going to go across to Andy Molcock, who is going to continue our prayers. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Samuel. We agree, don't we? We share together in prayers for this unity. And Paul writes to the Ephesians in chapter 1, verse 10. He says it's God's intention to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're praying in his name as we submit ourselves to him this evening. We thank you, Father, that your desire is for the unity and togetherness of all people and all of your creation under the headship of Jesus. So in these days, we're asking, Father, that the Lordship of Jesus will increasingly be recognized 
and lived out in this respect. Thank you, Father God, that in Christ Jesus, there's neither Jew or Gentile, slave or free, there's neither male nor female, for we are one in Christ Jesus. We're thanking you, Lord, that we're praying in the name of Jesus today, that there will be a togetherness and a harmony that overcomes barriers of race, social class, politics, and anything else that could divide us. And so we take these moments to take stock of ourselves and to reflect on when we might make choices and our preferences are based on being rather more like me than on love and humility. Let's examine ourselves, shall we? In these moments we reflect, we confess our sins and we're open to you, Lord, for the conviction of your spirit. If we omitted to do things or where we've made selfish choices, perhaps out of fear rather than love, Lord, we say we as your people turn from our sins. According to your great mercy and your grace, Lord, we ask that you purify and cleanse us. May we in humility always consider others better than ourselves. Have mercy, Lord, we're praying today on us, your church. Yes, you forgive us in your grace. And we pray according to the power of your Holy Spirit, you will shape our future action to be that that reflects your desire, that we will actively pursue peace, justice and love and be a prophetic example to our city and to the world of what it can be like when we submit to the Lordship of Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. So in a few moments now, just take stock ourselves. Maybe you'd like to type into the chat. What are the areas where we could be praying for this harmony, this love, this unity and togetherness that Jesus alone can bring to be revealed? Where is it for us that we can be praying tonight for more of that unity? Let's just have a moment, bring our own thoughts and prayers to the Lord, just for one moment. And as we pray for this revelation of God's harmony and love, we are praying, Lord, your kingdom come in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to go on to, on the same theme and issue, uh, hear from uh, Inspector Chris Channings from Devon and Cornwall Police, who's prepared something for us tonight to pray into this whole area. And then Brian and Jenny will be leading us in prayer after this. Thank you. Hello, my name's Chris Channings. I'm an inspector in Devon and Cornwall Police. As faith leaders, we would really value your prayers at this time for policing as we deal with the increased tension as a result of the horrific and unlawful killing of George Floyd in the States. The ramifications of the actions of that one police officer and his, the inaction of his colleagues who didn't intervene has been felt globally. However, this is not just However, a problem not for the US. The US. Um, racial tensions and racial discrimination is embedded in our society in the UK. And whilst the issue is wider and bigger than policing, policing still has a huge role to play in how we deal with these tensions. British policing is built on the principles of legitimacy. It requires continuous building of trust and confidence with the communities that we serve. We police by consent, and so we would really value your prayers that we would have wisdom as to how we do that. Policing can be a hard balancing act. Decision making is really tough. You think of the superintendent in Bristol who allowed that statue to be pulled down. It was a real case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. If we'd intervened, um, who knows what the consequences could have been. So as we navigate these difficult tensions, please pray for the following uh, um, issues. Wisdom for all officers as they seek to maintain peace, their decision making will be embedded in integrity. Pray for our senior leaders to lead by example, to show humility and willingness to listen and learn when we get things wrong. Pray for courage for officers to do the right thing and call out bigotry if they see it amongst their colleagues. Racism has no place in policing. Pray for the ability to build and maintain trust with our communities. That's such a key one. Pray for the recruitment and retention of BME officers and also that they would feel empowered and valued and supported in the organisation. And lastly, pray for the protests and demonstrations and vigils, that they will remain peaceful and the officers will remain safe. Many thanks. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, let's uh, pray for our police force. Father God, we thank you for those who serve our communities by working 
for the police. We realize that their task in keeping us safe and protected is often varied and challenging and can also be dangerous. We thank you for their willingness and desire to work to build a better society for us all. Lord, we are conscious of the greater challenges that we have been on, that have been on the police service over the last few months of lockdown. We pray for wisdom for each officer when they find themselves in situations where they need to make a quick decision that may have great consequences. Help them to be even-handed and proportionate in their response, especially when facing tense and potentially violent encounters. We pray for their safety as they protect our communities. We pray for those in leadership positions in the police service, that they would continue to seek the highest standards of personal integrity and trust. That their example to those under their supervision would be the benchmark for a servant-hearted culture within the whole organization. And we pray for those who are responsible for the recruitment of new officers into the police. Give them great understanding of the diverse needs of our communities so that the recruitment would reflect more and more all aspects of society. We especially pray for those from the BAME community who may be considering applying to join the police. We pray that they may bring a greater understanding and knowledge of the challenges facing our society. We pray that all who serve in the police may be shining examples on how to be caring, kind and protective to all. So help us to set that same example and encourage our local police officers in the work they do. Amen. And now Jenny will continue our time of prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom we enjoy in our society to express openly our views and concerns. We pray that any protests, demonstrations and vigils will be conducted safely and remain peaceful. We especially ask for protection, for grace and wisdom for the police in their attendance at these gatherings indeed wherever they encounter groups meeting publicly at this time. We thank you for the openness and welcome with which newcomers and visitors are received in Exeter, making their home here as the city grows in diversity. Lord, forgive us wherever our ignorance, thoughtlessness or prejudice have caused us to judge, hurt and exclude others. Help us to make every effort needed to educate ourselves, to listen, gain understanding and build bridges with others. We thank you for our significant international student population, for the way they enrich our city life and also for the many who've responded to the gospel while they were here. But sadly, some have experienced racial tension and abuse in the university community or among local residents. Father, we pray for comfort and healing. And we pray for wisdom and sensitivity for the university authorities and police as they work to ensure a safe and inclusive culture on our campuses and all over the city. And so we pray for your ongoing protection of this city and for grace and strength for those who are working to maintain a safe, just and peaceful society for all. Amen. And now there are a few moments for all of us to pray about these issues. Please do use the chat function to type your prayers or feel free to pray creatively in other ways too. Thanks, Jenny. We just wanted to take a moment just to thank Jenny and Brian and Chris, all people of faith who have served this city for many, many years. And we know that you're not just praying, but you are active uh, in advancing the Christian faith. We're instructed to seek the welfare of the city to which God has sent us to pray to the Lord on its behalf. For when our city prospers, we also 
prosper too. And so it's, we're just going to introduce a few more sections of prayer, show another video, uh, followed by another leader who will pray. But let this not interrupt your intercession right now, because God is going to move you to, to capture his heart and to keep praying. And so next in, join in, lift your hands, lift your voice, wherever you are, because I, I can feel that there's people just crying out to God for the issues of our city and we're instructed to pray for those in government we're going to do that right now by just uh, introducing our mp ben bradshaw just to pray uh, just to tell us what's going on and then we can pray with him thank you firstly thank you very much indeed for your prayers over the last few weeks and for everything that you and the other faith communities in Exeter have done to help those in greater need than ourselves there's been an amazing outpouring of community spirit during this uh, pandemic, unprecedented in my experience in my lifetime. And I hope very much that's something that we can hold on to uh, when we get through this and learn for the time being to live with the virus and hopefully uh, return to normal when we have a vaccine or effective uh, treatment. Uh, we've been mercifully relatively little affected in Exeter in terms of deaths and illness, although of course, there have been people who've uh, got infected and we, there have sadly been people who have died. Uh, but we have the potential to be one of the worst affected uh, regions in terms of the economic impact, partly because of our very high dependence on tourism in, in much of the region. And there have been many people who are already worried about their jobs. They may have already lost their jobs, people worried about their businesses. And already in the pandemic, we, we know of people, I'm sure you know of many yourselves, who've suffered loneliness or whose mental health uh, issues have been exacerbated by the impact of the pandemic and some of the restrictions on our normal uh, life. So I hope that as we come out of the uh, lockdown over the next days and weeks, that we can continue to be vigilant, to look out for each other, as is our Christian uh, duty, to be cautious, to remember that uh, we can only solve these big problems by working together, both uh, as a community in Exeter, as a country and as a world. If anything has reminded us that the big challenges facing our world, our world are global, it's been the impact of this global uh, pandemic. And there's going to be some worrying times ahead for many people when the support system that's been put in place for the economy uh, begins to run out over the next weeks. So continue to be prayerful, continue to be thoughtful, uh, give thanks that we've come as far as we have, uh, but let's continue to work together for the best of our community. And I look forward to seeing you properly, not just virtually, when we're hopefully through to the other end. Thank you. A big thank you to you, Ben. Uh, we're very privileged to have you as our MP and thank you for those prayer points. Uh, but before we even look at those, I want to pray for Ben and for those who are in office. Thank you, God, for calling people to serve you. We recognise the pressures, the tensions, the difficulties of public service and pray that you would have mercy on all who have given themselves courageously and unstintingly to a service in Parliament, government and in local government. Uh, it's part of our Christian and biblical tradition to pray for places and people of power, uh, political and economic. The, the Psalm says, pray, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And in Romans, it tells us to, to pray for those whom God has set in power. So now we pray for some of those points that Ben has set before us. And uh, do use this time to put your own prayers in as well, uh, on the chat, in the groups where you are at home. Uh, to bring before our Father the things that are of great significance to us now. Lord, we hold before you the, the economic impact of this virus, of the way it has caused jobs to disappear, uh, the economy to shrink, especially here in the southwest as summer arrives and we are so dependent on the tourist industry. Uh, there's a future which is unknown and many are frightened. Lord, we want to put our trust in you because we know that you are a strong rock. You are our strength and our security. And Lord, we pray for those people who may find there's no job for them when they go back. 
those whose homes are hugely under pressure, those who've been in self-isolation for so many weeks that the loneliness is crippling. And it's not the few, it's the many. We recognize how our mental health has been challenged. We bless you for all the gifts that you give us, and yet the stress and the strain is painful. Pour your Holy Spirit upon your people, that we may be to all a source of joy, peace, love, and goodness. And as lockdown eases, as traveling begins to happen again, both in this country and now as of this week to other countries as well, as we think about holidaying, help us to do it carefully. Help us to act with wisdom. And may your people, your church, be people of welcome, people of grace, people of courage in this difficult time. Let's just take a time to, to say, to speak our own prayers before our Father, who loves to hear us. And I'm going to hand over now, and uh, there's going to be another video clip from John Paul Hedge from our own Exeter City Council. Hello, my name's John Paul Hedge. I'm one of the directors at Exeter City Council. Thanks very much for this opportunity. Uh, it's really appreciated. Uh, you asked whether or not there's anything you could pray for for members of the council. There certainly is. Um, we're a group of nearly 700 people from all walks of life taking part in all different jobs at the moment, and they really are all different jobs at the moment. Um, there's, there's a mix of people with very strong faith, very different religions, or no faith at all. So I, on a personal note, would really appreciate uh, your prayers at the moment. Especially as things of working through with the virus, I'd like to um, pray for those on the front line of our work who are who are facing the virus every every day, whether that's just simply keeping the wheels on the bin deliveries or some of the stuff that we've been involved in in converting our facilities into shielding hubs or blood donation drives or just a lot of the work around um, that. I think everyone's dealing with change at the moment and we could certainly pray about that. Um, things we thought we knew even a couple of weeks ago, we don't. Um, we're in a in a huge amount of, of, of change, even with the financial situation of the council itself. So prayers around change would be really useful. Um, there's some big decisions to be made at the, at the moment. There's um, big political decisions, which are out of my sphere of influence around things like the carbon neutrality and, and trying to create a better Exeter and a, a vision for the future. Um, versus the very real coal face of a situation where council perhaps hasn't got the finances that it that it wants to do to affect the change that it needs to do. So that situation would be would be incredibly useful. Um, God for technology, uh, Zoom calls, and also the endurance to uh, to to go to go through them for all our families and the support network and everyone that's propping up everyone from the council at the moment in the background to enable them to to seamlessly carry on their their jobs by by you know holding the children back when we're on these on these calls and doing the work um thank you very much for all your kindness and support it's much appreciated so i'm just going to take some time now to pray for our city council Lord, we thank you that Exeter is such a beautiful place. We thank you that it attracts so many different people to come into the centre. But Lord, we pray for courage and wisdom for those who have to work in our city, those who keep it clean and tidy, those who have to work out how to make the changes possible that are needed during this pandemic. Lord, I pray that you would just give them your wisdom that you would uh, help them to navigate the changes that are needed. Lord, I pray that you would uh, just let your favour fall on this city. Lord, that our eyes would not be taken off the prize of making Exeter a better place. And Lord, you know that uh, the finances could be in trouble and we just pray for your favour on that too. We pray that somehow we would be able to work out the plans we pray for those people who have to make those decisions of where the money's spent. Lord, I just pray that you would help them discern, that you would help them navigate this whole situation. Amen.
So what I would love is for you all to be putting your own prayers for those people who are helping keep Exeter City going. Uh, put them in the live comments so that we can hear about it. Lord, we thank you that there is going to be an easing of lockdown, but we know that that comes uh, for some people as an excitement, but for others with some trepidation. We pray that all the uh, things that need to be put in place will be able to be done smoothly. We pray for those who have to make the decisions, who have to make some order in what could be chaos. We pray that your hand would be on them. And Lord, I thank you uh, for John Paul's honesty about the Zoom calls and the family issues and the support that he gets and his staff need from their families. So we pray now for all of those who are supporting the people who work for the council, that they would just have your grace and favour poured on them too. And Lord, I pray that each one of us, as we walk through the city, would be able to reflect your glory to those people working on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. So can I encourage you, as perhaps the city begins to open up even more, for you to try and walk through uh, town with a smile on your face and say thank you to those that you see working really hard. And I'm going to hand back now to Aaron and Mark. Great. Thank you so much, Helen. And thank you to all of those who've participated in leading us in prayer tonight. And thank you for all of you who've been praying alongside. There, there are so many of you watching and participating from so many different places. Um, we've got a whole list of churches here that you've sent in and said you're praying um, from places even outside the city. And we thank you for that particularly. We've got people from Dawlish, from Exeter, Stoke Cannon, um, Crediton, Plymouth, who said the two cities can't get on together? Thank you for praying with us. Um, we've yeah. got Torquay, Weymouth, Paynton, Barnstable. Uh, we've got various churches from all of those places. And thank you so much for praying. And I know many of you are joining in on watch parties on Facebook as well. So we won't see your comments, but you're obviously seeing each other's comments. Some mm. beautiful prayers for unity. Um, Adeniki mm. said, Lord, help us to dwell in unity together mm. and there's been some beautiful prayers around that there have been prayers for our police after that mm. call for the church to stand alongside our forces and some of the challenges they face um, Lydia Edmund said well said um, God bless our police force we pray for them as they stand up for what is right and uh, mm -hmm. Tracy has asked if we can pray for those who support our police in voluntary capacities, people like our street pastors, that your peace mm -hmm. may rule in their hearts. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some beautiful affirmations and uh, Adam has said, let us bathe in the grace poured out in mm -hmm. Exeter. Wow. Lucy has said, this is so emotional. I pray that my brothers and sisters in Christ never feel alone yeah. and that they may yeah. take refuge in you. Amen. We agree mm. with that. Amen. And then after Ben's, uh, Ben Bradshaw's call, um, Johnny has said, God, give grace to our political leaders during these very yeah. challenging times. And Mary has said, may we pray for financial favor over this mm. region. Um, Nikki has asked for prayer for those in business, that they will find creative ways um, to face in some of the challenges, mm. the extreme challenges that our business community is facing. Susie, for those who are running small businesses in our cities, who are opening their shops, but find the streets are quiet and cash flow is struggling. Father, we pray that you would touch their lives, mm. we pray. 
There are mm. so many prayers. Um, Vicky has said, Father, restore the honor of your name in our communities, yes. in our schools, in our workplaces, in our institutions, mm. in our emergency services, in our care homes, in the NHS, in the councils and the government. Pour yes, God. out your mm. spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Wow, that's just, thank you for sharing, Mark. Just as you was reading out those prayers, there's just a rich sense of the presence of God on those words. I'm reminded of the angel that, that took the incense and it said it, it mingled with the prayers of the saints and together it rose up into the presence of God. As I've just sat online in front of you, I just felt God's presence and, and he's joined us all together. We're in many different places tonight all over this incredible county joining together with one voice one heart one spirit to pray and can i just encourage you that when we come to the end of this meeting that you don't stop praying that perhaps you take that little few more moments to get on your knees and call down heaven you know because at times like this we need the church to rise up and to pray and to call on god to break through so thank you for all your prayers i want to conclude this section by declaring the scriptures of Romans chapter 5 and 15 verse 5 and 6 over your life. May the God who gives encouragement and endurance give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You prayed for his Jesus that we would be one. Tonight we have been one in in prayer what one in soul maintain us together in that oneness of relationship as we pray we ask in jesus name amen it's been a pleasure to be with you mark tonight and to share this space uh, there is a great connection that we have when we can join together in praying and i've just been really inspired uh, by all the prayers that we've been listening to Amen. Thank you so much for participating, everybody, this evening. Thank you for joining mm. us at home. I want to thank you for Jason mm. behind the scenes who helps produce all this and put it all mm. together live. And it's amazing that we can do this, isn't it? That join the church together in this yeah. way. But the Lord bless you. Let's keep praying. Let's keep on our knees. Let's, as yeah. Aaron just encourages mm. us, let's keep our heart postured before the Lord in humility. And let's pray mm. that he will heal our land. God bless yes. you. And thank you for being yeah. with us. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye.